We're continuing with our coaches check-in series with head men's women's tennis coach Randy Halfback. Coach, you guys had a pretty good season, uh, abbreviated season going into the spring. Uh, both the men's and women's teams were six and one, uh, coming off pretty impressive falls. Uh, what stood out for you uh, during this shortened season? For us, the the great part was is that everything started with the fall, and it's something we certainly talk about each year is how the fall can certainly lead into uh, the off season and the off season leads into the spring season. Um, and on the men's side, um, having the singles champion and the doubles champion, um, you know, the first time in school history, even having a singles champ or a doubles champion, obviously doing the double, um, I think is one of those things where it gave a lot of people a lot of confidence and uh, made it a little bit more exciting in regards to like the off season, October, November, December, where it's, you know, usually it's one of those things of you sort of work and to get, you know, everybody motivated to do what they need to be doing. And, um, but then having that, you know, having that situation where, you know, we had two guys win, um, I think it was one of those things where everybody got really excited and it started to show that, you know, with a little bit of extra work in the off season, the, you, know, you can do some really good things in the spring. And so um, the middle of the lineup, the bottom of the lineup, those are the kind of guys that started to see like, man, if we can take care of what we need to take care of, we have the guys at the top of the lineup. And it really built a, uh, a lot of confidence with everybody. And, uh, and it certainly was one of those things where we started the season off. Um, Alec and Ian were undefeated at the top of the, at the, top of the lineup with the, uh, in doubles. Um, and so it certainly carried over. So that fall, you know, really built into the spring. Um, and some good things for, we're certainly starting to build. Uh, we always look at spring break as that midway point in regards to like our lineup needs to be where it needs to be. You're getting everybody situated where they, you know, you know, sort of like any kind of major changes that we're going to make lineup wise was always going to happen sort of in that spring break area. And so that's, a, you know, where we were when all this uh, sort of took place. And so, um, you know, and having some, some big wins um, and early on in the season, we're really lucky with having indoor courts and being able to play a pretty good schedule early in February. Um, and so getting seven matches under our belts. And so, um, you know, it was really uh, one of those things where, we played a pretty tough schedule early on and were able to, uh, to play a couple of national ring teams. And um, so that fall really gave us the confidence kind of going into playing some national ring teams in February, which is not something we normally do. Um, and uh, and able to get some of those wins and, you know, having that six and one record going into it. You talk about Alec and but also on the women's side, Annika, uh, Jordan Schaefer, Lauren Brown, or, uh, Laura Brown are, are all tremendous contributors to the team. Uh, how do you see their their senior your upper class leadership kind of helping out the team for next year? You know, and that's one of those things where I think it naturally happens when you have players that are a little bit older and they get a little bit more. But I think you know, just sort of going through this is another one of those things where um, I think it's going to be a huge contributor to some of the leadership that we're going to have, and especially on the girls' side, they're doing a great job of staying in touch with each other and working with each other and. Um, it's crazy to sort of think about, but like these are the type of things that bring teams closer together. Um, and I'm definitely excited to sort of see some of them take leadership and sort of take the role of, you know, I'm going to be the one to facilitate a meeting. I'm going to be the one that's going to get together with the girls, check in with everybody, see how that they're doing. Um, and so, and then too, I think that's one of those things where like we were having so much success going into that spring break that the girls are excited about what could have been, you know, what should have been, you know, that type of mentality. And I think it's one of those things, I mean, it can only help to make you motivated for the summertime, to get you excited, to want to come back. Um, sometimes it takes an injury. It takes a little bit of time away from something to make you realize how much that you really enjoy it. I think that's going to be one of those things where I'm certainly hoping that's going to be one of those things where all the girls are looking at this and going, this was taken away from us. We haven't been playing. We haven't been on a tennis court as much as we normally would be during this time. It makes you really love the sport and kind of show that you miss it. And so everybody, hopefully everybody will be nice and hungry over the summertime and get really into it and, um, and sort, of, sort of like, all right, well, we had this opportunity to do this. Well, we have next year and let's get after it for next year. We talked about briefly, you guys had a lot of matches before spring break, you know, taking advantage of the indoor courts on campus. Do you see that, see that as an advantage compared to some of your, uh, the opponents that are maybe in like New Jersey, New York, some of those more Northern schools when you're out recruiting and looking for talent coming into to the fold next year? Yeah, we're very lucky with the facilities that we have. Um, you know, it's one of those things we actually played a really good amount of matches in February outdoors. Um, we only had a couple 
and it was actually getting towards more and beginning of March where we actually were more indoors. Um, but it is one of those things where we get to practice every day. There is not one of those situations where the weather is going to keep us from practicing, whether it's snow, rain, sleet, um, or just obviously temperatures, we're able to play inside. Um, and then for us, like the schedule, um, there were a lot of teams, some of the best teams in the country, um, never played one match this year. And so, you know, for us to get to play seven matches, um, it's one of those things where, like, obviously the situation is, is not good and we're being cut short. But it is one of those things where, like, it was great that we got to play seven matches. And so looking at some of the positives and some of the, you know, one of those things where we could, we had enough under our belts to build on something for next year. Um, and so getting to play a lot of matches in February was definitely a big advantage for us. And so at least it got to give us a chance to see what we had you know, some of the younger players getting to play a little bit of matches. Um, and then too, like I said, just sort of building confidence for what was the hope to be going into the CAC season and going into, you know, April and trying to win a conference title. Well, now it's going to be one of those things where hopefully we're building confidence for going into the summertime, which would then build into something to be into the fall. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we, it was one of those things where we played at least four matches. I think we ended up doing uh, playing indoors um, and so for us, it's one of those things that as opposed to rescheduling or playing in, you know, bad conditions and those types of things. We're, we're very lucky in the sense that we get to play those matches. And when we schedule them, we know that they're going to happen. Um, you know, the only difference, obviously, is playing on three courts as opposed to six courts. But um, we're definitely at a big advantage with that. And, you know, we, we love playing our, uh, our indoor matches. You know, you're not – you got cut short a little bit. Uh, you weren't able to, to fulfill your full season. Uh, in the spring, but how, what are some tips and tricks that you, you've been using to your teams on how to stay in shape and also be prepared for when we come back in the fall? It's also stay communicated with the team throughout this time. You know, for us, we, our last day, our last practice was on a Wednesday. Um, and we had no idea that on Thursday we weren't going to see each other again in person. Um, everything happened and, you know, so abruptly and it all happened so quickly. Um, everything sort of started from an update standpoint in regards to uh, group text and just kind of here's what's happening, here's what's going on, here's what we're hearing. Um, as things became more official from Salisbury, from the NCAA, um, it then turned more into, uh, you know, having a little bit more, you know, phone calls, some individual calls, um, you know, those types of things where we can stay in touch with everybody and kind of keep everybody updated. Uh, once we sort of became officially what we are now, which is sort of the new normal, online classes. We know exactly what the schedule is and that sort of thing. Um, we try to have a little bit more of a consistent schedule with some Zoom meetings. Um, I'm doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one phone calls and some FaceTime calls and, um, you know, as a sort of as needed basis. And um, so we're doing a sort of the typical things in regards to, you know, communication. We're able to get in touch with everybody in a quick way in, in regards to like a Zoom meeting and a, and a quick group text. Um, and then to just checking in texting wise and just one-on-one -on -one, just sort of seeing how people are and um, the questions in regards to fifth year for seniors. And um, so there's a lot of different things that are kind of getting now that we are, we're all sort of settling into what this new normal is um, being able to stay in touch that way. We also have a great uh, strength and conditioning coach and he's done a great job with staying in touch with them and sort of letting them know exactly what some of the workouts they can can be doing. Um, I know it's one of those things where it's a, where a spring sport and our spring season has ended. And so it's sort of that mentality of we don't have anything until late August. And um, but the hope is and the plan is, is for us to, you know, hopefully everything be, gets opened up and USDA tournaments happen, UTR tournaments happen. Um, and so they are able to get out on the court again and compete at a high level. And so we're going to need to be in shape in order to do that. And so um, it's one of those things where a lot of people are, you know, the, right now the focus is, and which it of course should be, is you know, getting their online classes taken care of and sort of adapting to that and then doing well there. And then hopefully they can get themselves into good shape. And so they're able to, to play some tournaments this fall, or I'm sorry, the summer that we can get us ready for the, for the fall season. Now, so we'll we see you out there for the Seagull Open come uh, February. You've been working on your forehand and back end in this time of staying at home. We shall see. We shall see. I, I took, uh, I did 20, I think it was 19 straight years where I played in it. Um, and I think it's been like two or three years that I haven't, uh, haven't been playing in it. So I did tell somebody the other day, it's funny as I cleaned out my car and I, I, I grabbed my racket 
and I was taking it inside to put it into the garage. I'm sitting there holding it, going like, man, I haven't held this thing in like weeks, and like it felt pretty good. So, so it is one of those things. Like I said, I mean, like obviously, I've I've had twenty some seasons. Um, you know, for me, it's one of those things where uh, I know the kids and like the disappointment of not having a season, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, for me, playing not playing has never been, but like now that I've been away from it for a little while, I'm actually kind of eager to get back on the tennis court myself and start hitting some balls. So. Um, so we'll see. It's a whole different ball game playing when I was 25 and 30 and I'm in my 40s now. So a little bit different. But yeah, I like that. It's, it's one of those things I always have like to have something to motivate me. And that could be a good motivator right there.